Hello Internet, in this video I'm going to be painting a Beast Boss on Squigasaur. That's right, I thought it was about time that I did an Orc for October 2023. I thought what a good opportunity to do an Orc that I'd been putting off for a while because I was a little bit nervous about what a cool sculpt it was. Um, so yeah, we are doing the Beast Boss on Squigasaur. Now with a few of my most recent orc characters, I have made them come across as Tyranid Hunters. For example, the Weird Knob has a Tyranifex head placed on the top of its magical staff, and the driver of our Death Killer War Trike is literally blasting the brains out of a Hormagon as he drives past it. So with the update to the Tyranid range recently, I have a resin version of the Lictor that I'm no longer going to use because I'd much rather use the new kit. With that in mind, I decided it's a good idea to replace the sword that would be carried by our beast boss with a lictor arm because they are just as deadly. To do this, I simply cut off the base of the sword that is underneath the beast boss's hand and I also clipped off the rest of the sword above it. I didn't actually need to do any cleanup work for this. I decided I was going to leave the bandage areas underneath his hand um, because I thought it'd be a good idea that he had wrapped this around the portion of the lictor arm that he was going to hold, simply for safety reasons, if all can actually think that far ahead. Then I simply cut the lictor arm and glued it in place. It was a really easy and simple conversion to do, but allows us to tell the story of this guy being a timid hunter. When it came to creating the base for this model, I knew that I wanted him to be a little bit elevated, but I needed to keep the textures the same as the rest of my orc army. To do this, I cut a piece of cork to the rough shape of the base. I bent the piece so that a small part of it at the bottom started to pull away. However, I didn't want it to completely detach, just break enough so that I could bend it on the base. This would allow for a more gradual slope, starting from flat going into a risen point. To place stones under this risen platform, I used bits of cork that I had clipped off earlier and made sure the smooth edges weren't exposed. I then filled in the rest of the gaps using actual stones and sand and texture paste. Now if you're a regular viewer of the channel you know that one of the main colours I use when painting any of my orcs is purple. This is normally the base tone for all of the skins and it features heavily on the armour. I also knew that I wanted it to be the shadow colour of the squig as it's a red and they will complement each other nicely. So with that in mind, I decided to actually just paint the whole model purple. You can obviously do this by brush, but I did it with airbrush just to keep it quick. By applying purple on all areas of the model, it would instantly allow for a unified shadow colour. Something that runs consistently across the whole model. When it came to painting the base, I did my usual colours of Steel Legion Drab, then highlighting up through to a bone colour and using various washes along the way. I used browns and sepia tones just to add a little bit of variation, but I didn't apply the wash to the underside of the raised platform as to allow the purple to show through still. When it came to painting the squig, I wanted to push myself in a direction I hadn't before, and that was to actually use the airbrush for something other than base coating. So the first colour that I used on the squig was corn red. It's a nice deep red that I thought would be good for the darkest version of the colour. I made sure to only spray this from above as I want the underside to remain purple and for the shadows in the slightly more recessed areas, whether that be his scars or his heavy brow, I wanted those to remain purple as well. The next colour I used was Mephiston Red and I sprayed this on the more upward facing areas such as the snout, the ridge of the back, the tail and the thighs of the legs. Then I moved into using Troll Slayer Orange, which I applied even more sparingly to just the snout and the highest point on the tail. I concentrated on the face when using this colour to draw your eyes as a viewer to that part of the model, as I think it is the most important. Once I was happy with the skin, I moved on to painting the lips. To do this, I mixed our original purple colour with a pink. Then using a brush, I started to pick out areas to highlight. Once that initial layer was done, I mixed in a little bit of ice yellow to the mix. I'm using ice yellow rather than a bone colour or white, as I believe using a colour with a little more hue makes for a more interesting highlight, whilst it doesn't pull away from the original colour too much. Once the lips were done, I painted the teeth, and to start this, I base coated all of them in scrag brown, and then rather simply, I did a few layers, adding more bone colour to the scrag brown each time, and focusing the paint more towards the tip of each tooth. 
By this point, the Squigasaur was looking mighty ferocious and I decided it was to move on to some of the more mechanical looking parts. Now, instead of base coating the metallic leg in a metallic color, I decided to keep it purple and dry brush on a silver. This meant it would only catch the edges of all the pieces, which allows us to really define the shape whilst keeping all the shadows this original purple. I also pick out a few areas and use a brush to apply a bronze colour. This is just to add variation to the metallic areas. I feel like just having a straight silver across all metallic areas can appear quite boring and using different types of metallics can really add some interesting variation. When it came to painting all the leather areas, I kept it really simple and I used Vallejo's Leather Brown and base coated all of it with that colour and then, the same as painting the teeth, I added a little bit of bone to the original colour each time that I wanted to add a new layer of highlights. These highlights were focused on the edges of the straps and any sculpted ridges. Then I moved on to what is easily my favourite part of painting any orc model and that is the skin. Now this time I left a lot more purple than I usually do. I always use the same method and the same colours, but by leaving the purple a bit more, it added a much higher contrast and it makes the skin look a lot more dynamic. I also make sure that I'm focusing on the placement of each of these highlight layers. And what I mean by this is I am placing the new colour closer to the top of the muscle. Not just in the centre, we're not creating islands, we are creating muscles that join together and therefore we should be highlighting the top areas of them, regardless of if they are the most exposed point of that muscle. Doing this results in a cleaner appearance and it sends a clearer message to your brain on how these muscles are working. Once the skin was done I applied metallics to the guns and all the various buckles and stuff that this orc is adorned with. This time I was just painting it straight on rather than dry brushing and I made sure that I was adding a bit of variation using bronze again. When I was happy that I had covered all of the metallics I applied streaking grime to all these areas. This is a nice easy way of adding a wash to an area that genuinely feels quite dirty. I've come to the conclusion that streaking grime works better on metallic areas, hence I've only used it on metallic areas on this model. If you want to know specifically how I apply streaking grime, make sure to check out my video based on the very topic that is linked in the description below. There you'll find a basically a complete guide to using streaking grime. Now when it comes to painting skulls, I normally have a set method, and that is to go from vinyl oxide to still lesion drab and then up to a bone colour. However, I was making sure that I was leaving purple in as many areas as I possibly could on this model. With that in mind, I cut out wine oxide entirely and made it so that the purple was the darkest colour on the skull. Then going from there, I mixed Steel Legion Drab into the original purple and picked out all of the areas that I wanted to be highlighted on the skull with this colour. And then mixed in a little bit of bone colour and highlighted up to a pure bone, but in every step this purple was being used. I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, but I'm actually really happy with how it looks. Even though purple wouldn't usually appear on a skull, I think it really helps unify the whole colour scheme by implementing it in this way. I painted all of the armour panels using my normal colours of the base purple I've been using up to Gene Steeler purple and then Jacaro orange through Towel Light Ochre up to a small dab of bone colour for the orange areas. The further this orc is wearing was a very simple step. I just base coated it with vinyl oxide, then dry brushed it with still legion drab up to a bone colour. So I ended up getting my bone skull kind of recipe in there somewhere after all. Now the final steps were to apply some rust techniques, sponge on some fresh chipping of metallics and add some blood effects. With that, I was done. to admit I absolutely love how this model turned out. It was really fun to use the airbrush a bit more in a way that I haven't really before and it allowed me to push the colour so much further than I normally do. However, that has made it appear as though the old squig hogs are really dull compared to this guy. I won't be repainting them however because it is important to have a record of your progress in your paint projects. At least that's my belief. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel so that you see my new videos in your subscription feed. If you would like to join my Patreon, you get behind the scenes access for only £2 a month. And that basically allows you to see everything that I'm working on 
before I am officially posting it on the internet. It's also a good place to just hang out and chat and influence what videos I'm going to be making in the future. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I will see you later.